The Art of Photography, written by Jeffrey B. First. Introduction. While on vacation, your dad drags you out of bed and down to the ocean for a 5 a.m. whale watch. Yawn. But wait, look at that huge tail rising out of the water. Good thing you brought along your camera. Photographs of whales at dawn, historical landmarks, or family members doing wacky things preserve your amazing or amusing vacation memories forever. Taking photographs nowadays is a snap. With inexpensive disposable cameras, basic point-and-shoot compact cameras, and digital cameras, all you need to do is aim and click away. That wasn't so in the early days of photography, when taking pictures required expensive, cumbersome equipment, knowledge of chemistry, and lots of patience. And even though most people today use digital cameras, learning about film photography can help anyone who wants to take great photos. History of photography. The word camera comes from a Latin word meaning chamber or dark room. A camera is just that, a dark box with a light sensitive film or a chip on its back wall. When you click a camera, a shutter opens in the front, letting light into the box for a very short time. That light, reflected off an object, forms the image on the film or chip. The lens of the camera, like the lens of your eye, collects and focuses light onto the film or chip. The first crude camera was invented around AD 1500. It could only project an image onto a screen or a piece of paper, like the pinhole camera in the project on the next page. It took a few hundred years and a series of scientific discoveries before people figured out how to make permanent images. First, they discovered that certain chemicals turn dark when exposed to light, and then they found a way to use other chemicals to keep the image from fading. The earliest cameras took hours to record one blurry black and white image. In the 1830s, a French inventor, Louis Daguerre, created a way to make sharp-looking pictures in less than 30 seconds. His images, called daguerreotypes after the inventor, became the first popular form of photography. It wasn't until the introduction of the Kodak box camera in 1888 that photography became an affordable hobby. The Kodak camera was lightweight, inexpensive, and easy to operate. Best of all, amateur photographers did not have to go through the long, often painstaking process of developing the film. Like modern film cameras, the box camera recorded images on a roll of film. People sent the film, along with the camera, back to the company where prints were made and the camera was returned with a new roll of film inside. Today, many simple cameras use film. Film is a strip of plastic coated with a silver substance that is sensitive to light. When light strikes the silver coating, its chemicals react, forming an image on the film. After you have taken your pictures, they need to go through a multi-step process to become photographs. First, the film is placed in a chemical solution called developer that makes the image visible. Next, the film takes a stop bath and another chemical solution that stops the developer before the image becomes too dark. Now you have a negative that shows the reverse of the image. Light objects look dark and dark objects look light. A print, also called the positive, is an enlarged copy made from the negative. The developing process is reversed, starting with light projected through the negative onto light-sensitive photo paper. The photo records the reverse of the negative, so you see the image as originally recorded. Then a chemical fixer sets the image or makes it permanent in the paper. Many professional photographers print photos in their own dark rooms, but you'll probably send your film to a local photo lab where the process is done by machine. What are all those numbers on a roll of film? They tell you the film's width or format, its length, and most importantly, its speed. Most film is 35 millimeters wide. Its length, typically 24 or 36, tells you how many pictures you can take on that roll. The number you should note, depending on when and where you plan to take pictures, is the film's ISO rating, or speed. The film's speed tells you how quickly it will react to light. A higher number means the film requires less light, so 400 speed film is better for dim light, and for action shots where you're trying to capture movement, lower 100 speed film is better for outdoor shots taken in full daylight. A good multi-purpose film is 200 speed. 
Digital cameras work like other cameras, except they don't use film. Instead, reusable light-sensitive microchips store the images. Shots taken with a digital camera can be seen instantly on the screen. Don't like what you see? Delete the image and try again. Remember, there is no film to waste. The shots you want can be transferred to a computer where you can change them electronically. That's when the real fun of digital photography begins. Make the colors richer, put one photo into another, or remove something or someone you don't want. Retouching, airbrushing, and other improvements, tricks once only done by skilled photographers in darkrooms, can now be done on a computer, but they still require the same artistic eye and lots of patience. Ready, aim, shoot, the art of photography. Now that you know how cameras work, let's get clicking. First, you need to choose a subject or something you want to take a picture of. It can be a person, a place, a thing, or all three. Composition, or framing, is how you arrange what's in your picture. If your subject is a person, you want to fill the frame, but leave a little room around the person's head and shoulders. Keep your subject between the lines in the viewfinder, or you may cut off the top of his head. That might be good for an arty look, or if you don't like him. Don't get too close, or the image may turn out fuzzy. Arrange a group of people so they're all about the same distance from the camera. Otherwise, the ones closer to the camera may look washed out, and the back may look dark. Experiment with the composition, and don't be afraid to try things and make mistakes. Position your subject in the middle of the frame, and then off to the side. Shoot through a window or an archway. Look for interesting shapes and contrasts, such as a jagged fence against the curves of a hill. Consider the angle. Kneel down and shoot up at your subject to make it look more important. Hold the camera vertically for portraits. Emphasize the foreground in the front part of the picture, and then try a similar shot emphasizing the background. Shots of scenery often look more interesting when there's a person in the foreground, giving the shot a sense of scale. Watch the background. Keep it simple and make sure it doesn't look like something odd is sticking out of your subject's head. Remove clutter in the foreground that might take the focus away from your subject, or move yourself for a new perspective. Exposure is the amount of light that falls on the film. The word photography comes from Greek words meaning to draw with light. Light is the photographer's best friend and worst enemy. Exposure to too much light, called overexposure, will make a picture look washed out, while exposure to too little light, called underexposure, will result in a too dark picture. Professional photographers use such tools as light meters, blood lamps, and light reflecting screens to help them get the correct exposure. Or they may use a flash to make a sudden burst of light, brightening a dim scene. On simple cameras, a flash is built in and some activate automatically whenever light levels are low. The focus or sharpness of the image is determined by the distance between the camera lens and the subject and between the lens and the film or chip. Lenses can only focus on objects that are certain distant away. Most simple cameras focus best on objects about five feet away. Advanced compact cameras come with motorized zoom lenses that move out to take close-up pictures or in for wide-angle shots at the push of a button. Cameras are very sensitive me mechanisms. Even the slightest movement may cause a blurry picture. To keep the camera steady, hold it with both hands, keep fingers and hair away from the lens and flash, tuck your elbows into your sides, Stand with your legs slightly apart so you are balanced and comfortable. For more steadiness, crouch down on one knee or sit cross-legged with your elbows on your knees. Try pressing the camera against a tabletop or a wall. We use the shutter release button slowly and evenly. Fun Photography Projects A panorama is a long, continuous picture that shows a very wide view. It could be a spectacular city skyline, mountain range, beach scene, or simply the view from your front door. Choose an open location without too many objects in the foreground. Imagine the scene broken up into three to five different sections. Practice moving the camera across the view from left to right or panning without moving your feet. Take a series of photos so that each section overlaps the section before it by about one third. What you see in the right hand part of the first shot should be where the left hand part of the next shot begins. Start at the left side of the scene and work your way toward the right. It's a good idea to take a few shots of each section. Next, lay out the photos so the right side of one matches the left side of the next. Glue or tape them together to form one continuous picture. Here are some other fun photography projects. 
You can create cool effects by putting colored cellophane in front of a lens. This will block or reduce the color of the cellophane in your photo. What do you think will happen when you take a picture of a yellow car through a yellow filter? Try aiming the camera through the lens of polarized sunglasses. This helps screen out glare from shiny surfaces and bright sunlight. Make a frame filter by cutting shapes out of black construction paper and taping the paper to the front of the lens. Try star shapes, keyhole shapes, or arches, or use your imagination. Select your favorite photos and organize them in an album so they tell a story. Beneath each photo, write the date and place taken, identify the people, and describe what is going on. Don't discard the photos that don't come out well. Make a collage. Cut out pieces of unwanted photos and arrange the images to your liking and paste them into a poster. Create a line of greeting cards. Glue a photo of yourself, family, friends, places you've been to, sites you've seen, shots of wildlife and nature, and so on, onto a piece of paper folded in half. Write a personalized note inside. Explore more. At the library. Your local library or bookstore will have many books on photography. They will teach you how to produce great pictures of people, scenery, and weird and interesting things. Have your librarian help you find photography instruction books for kids. Look in your library's art section to find books with famous photographers. You can learn a lot about photography by studying the work of professional photographers. On the internet, A, in the address window, type www.google.com. B, in the search window, type the subject you want to learn about, such as digital cameras or photography. You might find more interesting websites if you include the phrase, for kids. C, click search. Read the colored links and click one that looks interesting. D, when you want to explore more links, click the back button on the top left. With your camera. One of the best ways to explore the world of photography is to take lots of pictures. Take a camera with you wherever you go. Think about how things around you might make good photographs. See if you can make works of art from the people, places, and objects around you. Don't worry about making mistakes when you're having fun with your camera.